So this is the MetaQuest 3, and despite being half the price of the MetaQuest Pro, it's actually way better than the Quest Pro in many ways. Of course, you're getting way better resolution on here, you're getting 120 hertz refresh rate versus 60, you're getting a more comfortable, lighter feeling device, and you're getting a 10% longer battery life with very few compromises. Like for one, you have less RAM, not really a huge deal, and you don't have face and eye tracking. But for a lot of stuff that's built for VR right now and AR, this is arguably a better device than the Quest Pro. So now that it's been out for a little while and I've been using it pretty consistently, I wanted to kind of talk about what this device is, who it's going to be right for, and if it's worth upgrading from a Quest Pro or a Quest 2, or maybe an older device if you have one. Honestly, this has really been fun to have around, but even though there are a lot of great things that I love about this device, there are quite a few drawbacks that like, well, we're going to talk about throughout this video. Let's start off with kind of like a, a summary of what it is, just kind of showcase it in case you haven't seen this before. Like, for one, you you look a bit like a, a triclops, if that's the right word. Like, you've got three little bug eye looking things in the front. Doesn't matter. You look funny wearing this anyway. So, honestly, if that's what they need to do to make it work, that's fine. But we've got a lot of cameras and sensors on here. So, uh, of the three things in the middle, the, the ones on the outside, so the left and the right, are stacks of cameras. And there's also cameras over on the right side and the left side pointing down. And these allow you to see everything around you. Kind of gives you like an augmented reality. And after using it, it is in color and it works like pretty well. You can see everything, but I wouldn't like to walk around like this because it tries to like augment all the cameras together and you end up getting a lot of warping around things. So if I'm putting this, like if I wear this and I move my hands around, my hands look fine. Everything else looks fine, but any border between my arm and the background gets like really weird and warped and it moves. So it can give you a little bit of a headache, it can be a little bit uh, disorienting if you're not used to that. And ultimately it's not something I would wanna do for a long period of time. But it's still like, it gets the job done for what it's meant to do, I think that's fine. If you're trying to work at like uh, your laptop and use that as like a, a monitor, yeah, it's kinda nice to see your surroundings and I don't plan on like driving a car with this. So. I, I'm not going to hold that against them. Looking at the top, we've got a little LED right there telling you, of course, that the cameras are on, that this is also on. On the bottom, we have our little volume rocker. We have a wheel on the right side. That'll adjust where the, the, the lenses actually are. You can move them closer and further apart. And on the bottom, you'll also see three nodes there. If you want to charge this with the charging dock, that costs extra to buy. I didn't buy that. I actually just bought uh, just this one, the base model, uh, 128 gigabytes and you can charge this by USB Type-C. That's easy enough for me. I don't really need to have a dock for this. Well, I mentioned there is a more expensive model. You can pay for a 512 gigabyte model as well if you want more storage on there. And kind of going around the tour a little bit more, on the, on the left side, it's opposite when I'm looking at this. On the left side, we have a button there. That's going to turn the, the power on and off. And of course, on the inside, you'll see on the top between the lenses, a little sensor there that detects when it's on your face and when it's off. And one little thing that a lot of people don't mention that I think is really important is on the inside, we have these little buttons all the way on the left side that can adjust where the pad is. And that helps you to improve the focus. So when I first put this on, it wasn't quite right. Like everything looked a little blurry. So you have to kind of pinch those, slide it accordingly, and then it'll fit well and everything should be a lot clearer and more in focus. The last thing I want to mention, the straps on here and the speakers. The speakers, there's not a whole lot to talk about there. They do a good job. You're getting a reasonable amount of like uh, bass and, and high end. It's not going to be like my best listening experience for music, but it's pretty immersive. It feels like you are in whatever, like you're playing Beat Saber, it's definitely going to get the job done. Of course, the strap, like I said, is adjustable on the front. You've got a little Velcro thing right there to change uh, the over the top side or size. And then on the back, you can just adjust these like where they actually connect. They look like suspenders on the back of your head. And if you adjust how wide apart they are, that adjusts how tight the overall band is. So that's kind of a summary of the device itself. Like I said, a lot of cameras on here, um, but we'll talk more about the experience in a second. Next, I want to kind of give you guys a bit of a tour of the controllers. These look and feel a lot like the MetaQuest Pro controllers. Um, and so, I mean, honestly, I don't really ever use them. You can see I still have like the strap on the bottom. It's good for like some games, but most of what I'm doing on here, you're able to track your hands. So I can wear these and like move my hands around. I, I can see like an outline of my hands as well as if I'm in AR, I can see my hands as well. And so you can just like type with these, with your hands. You can like navigate, grab things, pinch to select things. Like you really don't need uh, the controllers ever, like I said, unless you're playing a game, in which case, like, yeah, they're pretty ergonomic. They're nice, there's a little joystick on the top as well as two, uh, two buttons, as well as an, an action button and two triggers on either one. 
not a whole lot to say here. They're motion tracking, they work well, and uh, I don't know, I don't really use them that much. So I mentioned that in a lot of ways, this is better than the Quest Pro. And so one of those ways is actually going to be the processor on the inside, which enables basically everything you're doing with this. So this has the Snapdragon XR2 Gen 2 chip versus the Pro, which had the uh, Gen 1 Plus. So this is going to give you double the GPU processing power for faster load times. You're gonna have better like reflections and shadows. Everything's going to look a lot more realistic. And it's also going to enable a better resolution on here, which also gives you of course a faster refresh rate. Like I said, 120 Hertz on this compared to 90 Hertz on the Quest Pro and even 90, felt pretty decent. So 120 is definitely very, very smooth. And the display resolution on these is actually 2064 pixels by 2208 pixels. And that is per eye, uh, which is substantially better than the MetaQuest Pro and way better than the MetaQuest 2, giving you a lot better clarity, in my opinion. Um, it's all—it's not like it's definitely not 4K. And in my opinion, it definitely needs to be better. Because if you think about it, even though you're getting like a 2K display, that's across 110 degree field of view. I think it's like 110 by 96. So if you're looking at like a screen or like you know a simulated screen maybe your, your, your laptop screen or a little menu on there it ends up being like you scale that all the way down it's like 720p or something like that so it's not going to be an especially high resolution uh for every little thing you're looking at if you're looking close enough you definitely can see pixels and the quality of the pixels are also not perfect it's not it's no surprise because it's still vr it's still like not anywhere near like what an, an actual modern tv is but there is a little bit of like color bleed there's a little bit of like not true blacks on things but regardless like it is better than the previous one so i'm happy to see that kind of progress moving so quickly so now let's talk about the comfort in my overall experience using the quest 3. so for one i really expected the comfort on here to be a step down from the quest pro because the quest pro if you remember had the weight kind of distributed it had the battery pack on the back and then the rest of the display in the front so it was a little bit more balanced and this being all weighted on the front I thought was going to be much less comfortable. And the truth is comfort is never the reason I take it off my head. I can wear this as long as I need to uh, with like as it is. And it's always very comfortable for me. Instead, what makes me take it off my head after using it for a little while is usually either eye fatigue or getting a little bit of a headache um, because even though the displays are substantially better than before, they're still not quite where I think they need to be. It, it feels a lot more like you're using a CRT monitor from like 2003, which people did it all day. Like that was what people did when they went to work. They would look at those monitors, but you're more likely to get eye fatigue. You're more likely to get a headache after a while using it. And so the resolution on here feels a lot like that. If you don't have the focus perfectly correct, if you don't have the eye distance perfectly correct, or even if you do, and you just look at small text on there for a long time, like your eyes are going to get fatigued, ultimately it could lead to headaches. Um, and so I try to avoid reading like small things on there. It's a lot better for like a, a game, for example, like Beat Saber, any kind of games that are meant to be more cartoony, not meant to be as lifelike. It definitely it is perfectly fine. I don't really get nearly as much eye fatigue then because it's not meant to do, it's not, it's, you're not meant to look at little tiny details. But when I did try to like replace my laptop, I actually made a full video about that with the MetaQuest Pro. And I've sampled that. I haven't done like a full week with this yet uh, of, of just replacing my laptop. I might make that video if you guys want. But from the littlest testing I have done of, of using my laptop and then using this, first of all, it is very functional. But second of all, you do really need to make sure your text is larger so that your eyes aren't getting quite as fatigued. And additionally, while the battery life is sometimes a complaint, like the Quest Pro is two hours. This is about two hours, 12 minutes is what it's rated for. I find that to not really be an issue because you can just plug in a USB type C in here, charge it up, uh, even while you're using it, like you can plug it into your laptop, for example. And I don't really find it to be that intrusive. You got a wire coming out, but you don't see it anyway. It's not like you're trying to look cool with this on. So that's not a big drawback to me. Okay, so then if you have the MetaQuest 2, which is like 300 ish dollars, you've got the MetaQuest 3 for $500 and the MetaQuest Pro for about $1,000 if you find a sale. Which is this actually going to be best for? Like, who's actually going to be buying this? I would say anybody who bought the MetaQuest 2 and used it a lot, this is still going to be great. Like, this is probably a worthwhile upgrade. You're going to be very impressed by the improved performance, the improved displays, the improved comfort. Like, across the board, this is just way better than the Quest 2. But, of course, it is also going to be more expensive, which is why I say buy it if you really liked the Quest 2. But... If you, like many other people I know, bought the Quest 2, had some fun with it at like a Christmas party or whatever, and then it's kind of been sitting on a shelf for a while, 
then yeah, this is going to be the same thing. Because the software and the available software on here is really largely similar in my opinion. You don't have quite enough uh, AR applications just yet that really make it useful. In addition, the pass-through, even though it is better, it isn't quite the best resolution. It doesn't look real enough quite yet uh, to make a lot of those applications feel like for example, what Apple's commercial was for the Apple Vision Pro, like it doesn't quite look and feel like that on here. Now, I've, I have not tested the Vision Pro. I can't say if this is better or worse than that. But I mean, being that it's like one seventh the price, I think it's fair to assume it's not going to be quite as capable as the Apple Vision Pro, at least in terms of pass through, like I said. Uh, but then, of course, comparing this to the Quest Pro, I think anyone who's considering the Quest Pro, unless you really need eye tracking and face tracking, just go with this. Like I said, it's a lot better in many ways. Or perhaps just wait for like a second generation of the Quest Pro. Maybe that's going to come out, who knows, perhaps in the next year. But again, this was really fun to use. If you want to buy one, I'll have a link in the description below. Uh, but it's, in my opinion, not quite going to be the thing that gets everybody wearing a headset. It's not like the, the final ticket to that. I think this is a really good step in the right direction. And I think enthusiasts are really going to love this device. But if you enjoyed this video, consider liking and subscribing. I will be making a video very soon about the Ray-Ban Meta sunglasses. These are also a totally different approach to uh, smart glasses, smart headsets, I might say, that Meta is doing. And I love the way it's going. I think, I think Meta is doing a really good job here. So thanks for watching, guys. I'll see you in the next video.